please note that this video contains spoilers. The Fall Movie Thoughts. I am going to give away immediately just so no one wastes their time. I am not good with symbolism. That, you know, my background does not support a proper analysis of the symbolism in this film, which is why I initially wasn't going to do videos on this. But I have decided that I, I feel I have enough to say about the storytelling and the psychological aspects, so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. So, yeah. And, you know, throughout the film, we see how the relative emotional state of both storyteller and audience is affecting the, you know, the way the story plays out. And really, this is of course the case with any story ever being told. You know, there is not always this two-way communication. Sometimes it is a book or a movie, and the communication from the one side, from the filmmaker or author, is already complete. We can't actually, you know, make them change as directly what they're communicating as, you know, someone telling a story verbally, directly to someone who is giving immediate feedback like that. But our perception of it and the way it is stored in our memory will change. You know, when you read a book, the images you form are based on how you feel at the time, in part, and your experiences. You know, if you read a book and then go back ten years later and reread it, you might have a different image in your head in the exact same passage. The words are exactly the same, but it is affected by, you know, maybe your maybe your philosophy has changed, maybe you are a different person, you know, so to speak. And, you know, the same is true of the movie, albeit, you know, the image maybe won't entirely be, but intent, you know, the, the intent of a character might change as, you know, you get a more positive or less positive view on life and people. And, you know, maybe you meet someone who has done a similar thing and you understand why they did it, or you abhor that activity even more because you now know someone and you hate them for other reasons. Stuff like that. So, the entire movie shows that quite well. And, you know, there are scenes where this is entirely clear, such as when she has fallen from, you know, gathering the morphine for him. And he comes in and tries to finish the story. He brings to the storytelling situation that he wants to commit suicide. He has made up his mind and he's really trying to convince her to see it his way through the story. You know, basically, that last scene, it, it's a debate, really, you know, they're bringing their, albeit possibly, you know, I don't think she understands that quite, or at least not, she, she wouldn't put, put that word to it, she wouldn't call it a debate. He is trying to get her permission to commit suicide because he realizes, you know, what he did, and I'll get into that. You know, he wants her to accept that, and you know, and she's utterly unwilling to. And, you know, you can of course debate on, you know, if you think either of them are quite right in, you know, should he commit suicide or should he very much stay, you know, but he does have, have this one person who loves him and who doesn't want anything to happen to him. And, you know, often that is what brings people back from the brink of suicide. You know, as we find out in that very last scene in the very last monologue, he goes on, you know, he he heals completely and he goes back to being a stuntman in movies and she adores seeing him, you know. So, you know, and, and again, that is also, you know, maybe there is more to that scene of the movie being shown to the patients, but what I personally at least gathered from it was 
you know, again, storytelling, and these people are loving hearing a story. It's a very simple story, and it's told only in images, and very simple ones, very exaggerated, you know, the, the body language is over the top, of course, but, you know, they are still very much enjoying it. I, perhaps highlighting that we love stories, we want to be told stories, and not in the sense that we want to be lied to, but we want to follow a narrative. We want for things to, you know, yeah, you know, we, we enjoy narratives. And I would say this is true of any, you know, re regardless of the exact group, there will always be, you know, the... the the, the societies that are very close to outside influences, cults and, you know, primitive people, so-called, and, you know, religious, um, close religious societies and the like, they still have narratives. They just don't allow narratives from the outside, but they will have some, you know, some stories to... Uh, you know, moral lessons and the like, in their religion, that they, you know, we, we will always be thinking of stories, and we will always be wanting to tell these stories and to hear the stories from other people. But yeah, so, you know, what she brings to the debate is that she doesn't want that outcome, you know, he keeps killing off these mythical heroes that she's grown to love. He's trying to tell her, his main argument, life ends, you know, this, it is okay for me to kill myself because I will eventually die. That is basically his argument for committing suicide. And she can't, you know, she doesn't want that to be the case. And that is, of course, a child's perspective, you know, someone, some might call it innocent, others might call it ignorant. It is that kind of, you know, no, I don't want that to be the case. And, you know, obviously, when she grows up, she will have to deal with the idea of death. But that doesn't mean that he should commit suicide right now. You know, she doesn't have to learn that lesson just yet. You know, she she might not completely understand. You know, we see her shaking what she thinks is Roy and, you know, you're yelling, you know, they're, they're going to cut you. She doesn't understand that, you know, that person is dead. You know, she thinks that they could still wake up, and there isn't really a reason for her to lose that, again, commonly word, commonly used word is innocence, yet, you know. But, yeah, even, you know, she, she even affects it very directly with the, you know, when odious and the bandit are fighting, and she says, no more fighting, you know, they, he shouldn't even punch Odious, you know, and it just, you know, Roy is trying to let the bandit give up, and that that's what he's saying, because he is the bandit, you know, not only is, is that his face under the mask there, but he really is the, you know, the, the entire story he's been telling about this man who loves a woman but was, you know, rejected and ultimately seeks his own destruction, more so than that of the one who stole the woman, so to speak. You know, that is his own story. That is what he brings to this story that he is telling. The, that perspective, you know, that, that, that mood, you know, he is constantly, throughout the film, we see him try to commit suicide and fail, partially because she doesn't understand exactly what he's doing, and then, you know, there's that other thing with, you know, the sugar pills. 
you know, and it's, but, but yeah, what Roy did, Roy realizes by the end, you know, because he didn't want her to get hurt, but that is, of course, the, the contradiction of what he is doing. He is trying to have someone else help kill him, himself, and yet he, you know, he's, he's trying to tell himself, you know, that she isn't going to get hurt by this. And, you know, regardless of what exactly, how exactly it had played out, she would have been hurt by his passing. You know, over time, he, she grows to, you know, like him, maybe even love him. And, you know, even if it hadn't been, you know, if she had at some point realized that she had helped kill someone, you know, maybe it would take 10 years before she matured to the age where she would realize it if she hadn't repressed what had happened. But, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, regardless, he would have hurt her. And, you know, there at the end, he is, you know, he didn't want for that to happen. So, you know, it, it forces the reality of what he's doing on him. You know, there are other people in this world, and his death, while ending his life and his perception of the world, will not end everybody else's perception of the world. And thus, the rest of the world is left with a world where he is no longer in it, and they have to deal with that. You know, and I'm not trying to debate suicide here, I'm just... That is my perception of what the movie is trying to convey with this. The, I liked the little touches of, you know, things, the, the box that she carries around with things she likes is integrated into the, you know, in, into the movie. I don't recall exactly who, I think it's Darwin who suddenly has it and opens it, and, you know, the letter is exactly the same as her gibberish letter. You know the things like that, and how she th she keeps believing that your soul is in your teeth, and that your strength is in your teeth. So that when the mystic is killed, they are stomping on his teeth. One thing I did find the animal sounds used for the faceless, inhuman guards to be a tad over the top. I thought that that got to the point where it was... I think they should have changed them slightly so it wasn't quite as clear. I think I get what they were doing. They were saying that when she hears angry animal sounds or mocking animal sounds, that is what she would attribute to someone not human and monstrous like that. She hasn't... You know, she's not very old, but she has heard some animals make sounds, so that is what, you know, she's at some point been near an angry dog, a guard dog or something, so she hears uh, those, you know, but, but yeah, I think it was a tad too, it, it was a little downright distracting, and I honestly don't think the other things in it were, but I don't know, you know, dissenting opinion, please post it down below. The, I like the, you know, not only that he introduces Darwin and this idea of, you know, evolution and the natural order of things to this five-year-old girl, but also that there is a collaboration between this, you know, representative of science and the mystic who is representative of the supernatural. You know, Darwin is the one who understands the mystic and he trusts the mystic. There is next to no uh, actual conflict between those two characters, and I think that's fitting. It is a sort of everything working together. You know, there is room for everything, which is also seen in the mass of cultures and of different countries in the film. You know, we are all in it together. I suppose that and the anti-suicide 
you know, you could almost call this a sort of you know, a film that just loves life and humanity and just wants for, you know, room for everything and f room for everyone. I suppose that pretty well covers what I wanted to say. One thing I, and another thing where, you know, Alexandria's perceptions of the rest of the world affected the story. The guard, the, the man who walks into the x-ray room, the old-fashioned x-ray room where you know, they had to actually wear, you know, this almost suit of armor. You know, that that was fantastic. I hadn't realized that that's where she got it until there near the end where she realized it. And, of course, the, you know, the spell that the old man teaches her that also appears in the film. Yeah, I believe that is pretty much it. If there was anything else you wanted me to comment on, you know, post it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.